great Monday morning, you all. How are you all doing? Happy Monday. This is your girl, Shan. I hope and pray that you all had an amazing weekend and that you were able to relax and, you know, Netflix and chill, whatever the case may be. We don't always have to run 24 miles an hour. That's how we burn ourselves out. And so let me go ahead with my little announcement. Um, tonight, Marriage Mondays with the Kings, as you all may know, for those who have been, you know, following us, supporting us, whatever the case may be, I can't stand following, but supporting us, we started a family series called Family Ain't Family No More. And so what we're doing is a little subtopics. And the reason why we're doing it, because one of the things in our model is helping to build stronger marriages, right? And stronger families, which in turn build stronger communities. So anywho, in this series, last week we were speaking about trauma and dysfunction. And we were coming from childhood, you know, things that many of us went through in our childhood that we thought was normal. But then when you find out in adulthood, it's traumatic and dysfunctional, right? And so tonight we're going to do part two of it, kind of along the same lines. However, we are going to get into how that trauma and dysfunction that goes unhealed. Good morning, boo. How that trauma and dysfunction that goes unhealed, how it may present itself in your adult life. Hey, cousin, in your adult life, okay? And so it's going to be like, boom, you know, abandonment. It may look like this, 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 and this. And I know y'all like, well, why are y'all saying that? I'm going to tell y'all the truth. A lot of people don't know what they know until they find out and then they know, okay? So we're not trying to break up, you know, no homes or whatever the case may be. But if this, the root of the thing is not healed, if we're constantly saying, hey, go and seek help, go to counseling. We're telling y'all we need did the counseling and we need to start helping out that kind of stuff. We telling y'all because we know, not to say we know all things, but it will be more beneficial. But you don't know what to go get help for in counseling if you don't know what the potential problems may be. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, join us tonight, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on KRG and 98.5 FM, The Rock, if you're local. If you want to listen internationally and you have internet nationally and internationally, go to mykrgn.com. And then if you want to watch the show tonight then it's a link right here it's a link go to our youtube channel hit that premiere button or notification or something like that i don't really know how it works or whatever and so it'll notify you but one of the things that i want to speak about on this morning is this something that i'm actually starting to notice is and this is for the women and the men but there are a lot of women that are starting to choose themselves okay now, let me break that down because somebody probably like, oh, Lord, da -da. no, no, no. I'm not trying to be mean when I say this, but I'm not talking about selfish women. I'm not talking about women that it's all about you and you always got to be the center of attention and you got to be the loudest and the boldest. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about women who are actually the glue in their families, women who are actually the glue in their marriage. If we be honest, hey, sunshine, if we be honest, Women have always been taught, especially in the United States of America, I can't speak for all women around the world, but in the United States of America, honestly, women have been taught to cater to everybody else. You know, oh, well, you shouldn't dress like that. You shouldn't speak like that. You should walk like this. You should make sure that you cross your legs. You should be a lady. Don't sit with your legs open. Don't chew gum in public. I mean, all these different types of things. Women have been taught and indoctrinated how we are supposed to be right and this ain't no breaking up you know homes and all this kind of stuff but it's just the fact that the glue type women who they just want to be appreciated they want to be heard they you know they want to have a voice in their marriage and things like that these are the ones that are saying you know what and i'm gonna equate it to some here in a minute I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I keep repeating myself over and over again. I keep asking, you know what I'm saying, to be treated like everybody else, and I'm tired. And so women are starting to choose themselves. And so let me let me kind of equate that to something so what it really makes sense, right? On the job, you know how you give 150% on a job, 
and you know they need this and they always come to you because they know you gonna make it happen and oh go to mrs king oh yeah well miss chantrell can you do this can you be in charge of this project can you take this supervisor position whatever the case may be they're going to come to you because they know that you are going to make it happen all right but they don't appreciate you you're not getting any bonuses you're not getting any raises with the extra headache that they want you to have on that job. They want you to have more responsibility, but not more pay. Cause I know I was on a job and this was a female. My boss was a female. And I know it was, oh, well, she ain't to do this. She'll make sure. And it was only because I was so passionate about the veterans. I wanted to make sure everything was okay. Being a veteran about the veterans. And then when I kept asking, okay, so when am I going to get promoted? Like everybody else that got promoted in all these lo other locations, I have more responsibility. I have more that I have to do. And you told me that I was going to get promoted, but I'm not getting promoted. And then I'm voicing my concerns and they just go by the wayside. But my job, my job at the job was just to make sure that you keep everything together, make sure you keep everybody happy, make sure that you do, you know, but you were giving me more responsibility. I was given more responsibility and, and then I was promised to get a promotion. Okay. Some of y'all can feel me in that, but promotion never came. All the responsibility did. And so that's the same kind of thing where if you're a woman, you're a wife, that you are the glue. Y'all know the glue. The glue is the one you can go to and you can talk to. A lot of glue is passing away. So the true glue that's been keeping families together, checking certain family members and all that is gone. It's, it's like it don't even exist anymore. That used to be the grandmothers and the Medeas and the aunties, you know, or whatever. It's gone. Mm -mm, mm -mm. They don't even exist. And so if you're the true glue, you're the one that you stand up, even though you know you got to be at work the next day at 730 or whatever, you stand up to 11, 12 o'clock in the morning, making sure you help the kids. Every time the kids come in the house, who they coming to? They coming straight to you. Mama, I need. Mama, can you do? Mama, oh, I got this science project that's due tomorrow. How long you been knowing about this? Because you know that's what we say. Oh, it's been about two or three weeks, and you just not telling me? And it's 930 at night, and Walmart don't even stay open anymore for 24 hours like that. What are we supposed to do? Am I supposed to create something out of the earth? Y'all know how it's been, or whatever. But always doing your, your husband got something going on, whatever. You're trying to be there. You're trying to be to help me. You're trying to be supportive and all those things like that. But you can never catch a break because you are the glue. When people have in your family emotional situations is going on, guess who they call? They call you because you're the glue. Your kids going to call you. Your husband going to call you because you are the glue. But women are starting to say, wait a minute. <clears throat> When I'm voicing my concerns to my spouse, you don't hear nothing that I'm saying. And this is something that I've noticed as well. When it's kind of like, um, and I ain't trying to call people out, but I'm just saying, think about it with me. And ladies, y'all let me know, right? But it's kind of like uh, everybody else get the nice person of your spouse. They get the nice person. Oh, oh, this and that. But you may not get that at the house. And this is why women are saying, I'm sick and tired. I'm tired. Like I've been telling you and telling you and telling you and you're not listening. And let me tell you what the world has indoctrinated people with. Oh, women are just emotional. You do have some. I'll be like, girl, if you don't hush, get somewhere and sit down. Because I can't stand a windy female. I never liked that mess when I was in the army. Suck it up, boo. Like, uh. But if it's a real valid concern where you're trying to have your voice be heard, and we're already a generation, most of us, not all, because some of y'all had amazing parents where your voice was cultivated, your concerns, if you were going through things, they were right there with you. They were supportive. They would talk to you for hours. They would speak life into you. They would even pray for you. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of individuals didn't have that voice. So imagine marrying somebody who now one of y'all had a voice and now y'all in this thing called marriage and you're trying to be heard. Now, let me, let me kind of switch to this real quick. Let me tell you why I noticed marriages are not working as well. Because you have husbands that, and we're talking about trauma and dysfunction, you know, this whole series or whatever, but you have husbands who grew up in trauma and dysfunction and whatever 
it was for them growing up is what they bring to the marriage. And then you have wives that you grew up as a little kid in trauma and dysfunction. And so what happened is husband and wives, instead of leaving and cleaving like the word of God says, and you two becoming one, what you do is you will um, hold on to the dysfunctional and traumatic values of your family that you came from, and you're bringing it into the family that you're trying to create. And so soon as your spouse voices a concern, you think, oh, they, they coming for me, they mad, now this other kind of stuff. No. And I will continue to say this. Y'all going to hear me say this over and over again. I'm telling you, when Bishop T.D. Jakes from the Potter's House had that series called Before I Do, and I'm talking about this was probably in 2008. I remember ordering this series when we were stationed in Germany. It was a three-part series, and he was really expressing how important it is to examine how the family interact of whom you're looking to marry into. And so I would even encourage this, especially for those of you who are single, both male and female, have the conversations up front. You need to know what you're getting into. Is the person that you're going to marry, what do they think about counseling? If you needed to go and get some help, what do they think about going to God in prayer? You know, what do they do when their back is up, uh, up against the wall, as we used to say, back is against the wall? Who do they turn to? Who do they pour into? And, and you know what I'm saying? Or who do they receive advice from? Because see, growing up, what I used to see as a kid is if somebody was going through, if it was God, they had what they call old heads in the country. Then was the older wisdom type uncles, you know, even though they weren't technically uncles that come here, young buck, you messing up, man. You got you a good woman. We don't have that no more. Okay, we don't have that no more. You got you a good woman. You messing up. And then you had the older women. Come here, baby. Come here to the female. Come sit down, sweetie. We just want to share some things with you. They didn't bash you. They didn't talk down on you. None of that kind of stuff. And so what's happening today and Kenya and I were speaking about it. I want to say last week when it came to the book, there is a book and it may be a little challenging for some because Oprah Winfrey wrote a book with Dr. Perry. And it's called What Happened to You, okay? And in the book, Oprah talks about her traumatic experiences. Good morning, bro. Oprah talks about her traumatic experiences. And then Dr. Perry breaks it down from like a mental health perspective. Let me tell you this. That book, <coughs> excuse me, will have you like in deep thought and crying. If you don't read that book and see the dysfunction. Do you know what I'm saying? Especially if you had this function, you want to pretend like you didn't. You want to pretend like things wasn't what it was and you make up this fairy tale in your mind. That book right there, I'm talking about from getting whoopings. I'm talking about from uh, growing up in a safe, uh, having a safe space. A lot of us didn't have a safe space. You know what I'm saying? So it was a good book. It talked about the traumatic experiences and the dysfunction that Oprah went through and having absent parents and being raised by her grandmother. And so this is what I'm going to say. Look, man, I'm going to share this. So one of my friends for Mother's Day, and this is, a go this is a nugget for you males, right? This is a nugget for you males. One of my friends for, for Mother's Day, his wife kept telling him for years, I just want to have time to myself. I love y'all, but I just want to have time to myself. And he kept doing other things, whatever I'm taking it. But long story short, he listened to his wife. Let me tell you what he did. This man for Mother's Day weekend, I'm talking about from Friday to Sunday, he went and got his wife a hotel at a resort spa, okay, for the whole weekend. She walked in that room and he told her, baby, you don't have to leave the hotel for nothing, okay? So he surprised her. This is what you getting for Mother's Day. Then brief the kids. Don't call your mama this whole weekend. If We gonna figure it out, but don't call her, okay? This whole weekend to relax. Baby, she said she walked up in that room. All her favorite snacks was in a huge gift basket, Okay? Sitting right there, roses the whole nine, bro did it up. And then 
He told her, whatever you want to do, if you want to go and get something to eat at the restaurant, if you want to go get you a massage at the spot, he didn't limit nothing. You see what I'm saying? Big ups, like we used to say back in the day to this husband, it, go, baby, it's paid for. Whatever you want, she got to sleep in. She got to turn her phone off. She didn't have to worry about nothing. Lady, share this video, okay? Husbands, that's how uh, you do it. If you see your wife running a hundred miles an hour, and I want you to imagine this, because this is why women are choosing themselves, and they don't feel appreciated. Because you know, like I told my husband, and people say, well, Shane, you shouldn't do that. I'm a different type of breed. I'm a different type of female. I, I don't give me no dozen roses and spend no two hundred and fifty dollars on them because I'm a numbers person too. Two hundred and fifty dollars. I don't know nothing about keeping up no plants. I didn't kill the cactus. Okay, overwatering the cactus. I didn't kill a cactus, peace lilies, all that stuff. I could show you some some centronella plants right here, just dead. They dead right outside, right out here in this living area, right? So I tell my husband, no, nah, mm -mm, don't get me roses that cost $250 is going to be dead in a week because I could have did some mess with that $250. You know, that could have went towards my resort stay for the whole weekend. You see what I'm saying? Don't do that. I know you think it's cute. It's okay every now and then, but don't let that be my gift. And then husbands, I want to talk to you about this. Especially if you got a, a wife that she goes above and beyond to make sure you have the best birthdays. Make sure you have, because she's listening to you, what you really want for Christmas. You know, if y'all celebrate that. What you really want for Father's Day. She been planning that thing. And then boom, here you go. And you are so happy. Don't you turn around with your rabbit monkey behind and just get her some roses. That is a slap in the face. That's what it is. If she's been telling you, and that's the problem why women are starting to choose themselves. Because if I've been speaking to you over and over and over and over again, sir, and it's a broken record, you can hear everybody else, but you can't hear your wife. That's a problem. And the thing is, when the wife gets tired, and I, you know, we don't advocate for divorce. We try to encourage as much as we can, but we walk in in reality. We know that it happened. I'm just saying. But when she gets sick and tired of being sick and tired, because she done told you over all these years, because I'm telling you, I used to ask myself, how can somebody be married 20 plus years and they call it quits? I used to say this all the time when I was in the military. I didn't get it. Now I get it. <laughs> I get it loud and clear. You see what I'm saying? And so what happens is people then start to criticize the woman. You never really criticize a man. If he walks away from the marriage, only if maybe he's abusive, maybe if he's a serial cheater is what I'm going to call it, a serial cheater. Then that's when you might say something negative about the man when the, the wife gets tired. I've been going through this over and over again. I've been trying to save face. I've been trying to do all the things to let you, but no, you out here looking for something else. You're not appreciating what you have at home. You're not appreciating your glue. And most men, if we can keep it a buck, I got a brother on here, but most most men, and I'm sure he didn't seen it, men don't realize what they got until it's gone. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone, okay? Who was that? Bill Withers back in the day, baby. I heard a record playing in my ear. Ain't no sunshine. Ain't no something when she walks away, okay? So I need the men, and I'm not trying to bash y'all. To understand, because you have some good men out there, some good husbands, they are very attentive to their wives. Baby, I know some husbands that they, oh, my baby tired. They go run the bath water. They don't ask. They run the bath water. You got your glass of wine. They got the massage oil the whole nine because they're in tuned with their wife. And when a wife uh, married for real, I want y'all to go on Facebook, Instagram too. And type in married, the number four real. That's the couple that we had on the show not too long ago. And they just did a video where the wife was talking. The husband was cleaning. He was doing all that. And they were showing, this is what wives like. When I don't have to ask you to do stuff. When you can just recognize. But in order for you to do that as a husband and wife, you got to be in tune with each other. My husband, I know when he's tired when he come in. He ain't got to say nothing. Baby, I'm going to do this. Hey, go take your shower. I'm going to run some bath water because I'm in tuned. You see what I'm saying? 
husbands and wives learn how to be in tune. But Mary for real. They got the video they just posted a few days ago. And I was like, come on, sis. This is what it is right here. So husbands, if your wife keep telling you over and over and over and over again, what I want you to ask yourself is this. What is blocking you in your mind where you're not hearing your wife? What is it that if someone else, male or female, asks you to do something, as we used to say in the military, you can jump to? You're going to make that thing happen. But why not your wife? The one who's raising your children. The one who's supporting you. The one who makes sure you ain't walking around out this house looking ashy, elbows, ankles, and knees. You see what I'm saying? So when a woman is tired and she leaves, then everybody talk her down. They talk about her like a dog. Oh, well, she had a good man. Is it? You did not know what that woman was going through in her marriage. You did not. Because guess what? We grew up in a generation where you fake and pre pretend like everything outside of the house is wonderful and amazing and it's tore up and toxic inside the house. And social media didn't make it any better. So don't judge that woman. If you want to learn and glean from her, then ask her what happened to you. That's the name of that Oprah and Dr. Perry book. What happened to you? Don't ask so you can get information to spread the latest tea and you can judge. No ask. And nine times out of ten, when you know that's a good woman, when that husband has said, my wife is a good wife, this, that, and the other, baby, I'm here to tell you, that sister, and I ain't talking about color, that woman got tired. She got probably tired of repeating herself. She probably got tired of not being treated like the wife. Because guess what? When it comes to husband and wife, nobody else come before that. Nobody else should come before your husband and your wife. And that's why people are getting a divorce. People are tired. We done went through a whole pandemic. We done watched people dying, get murdered. You know what I'm saying? We done went through a lot mentally. And then I got to set up her in war with you in my home. I'm giving you 150% and you giving me 10. Mm -mm. So I'm here to tell you, get in tune with each other. Husbands, if you know you got you a good one, you know you got you a good one. You know when you walk out your house, your house is going to be still standing. This lady paid her bills. She making sure everything is done. She's cooking. She's working. What? more what more <laughs> could you ask of such an amazing wife you better know what you got okay and not only are women choosing themselves mentally physically spiritually and emotionally not only are they choosing themselves it's not like they're getting out of the marriage and they're going to be with somebody else this no that's not what they're doing they're choosing themselves they're taking time and they're learning how to heal okay so I'm just, you know, sharing what God put on my heart. Don't, don't, don't let that pride come between you losing your good thing. Because even the word of God says, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor. When you got some good glue, your wife is amazing glue. You better understand you got favor on your life because of your wife. That's the word of God. You got favor, sir, because of who you asked to marry you. Don't destroy your favor because of your pride. So join us tonight, Marriage Mondays with the Kings at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on KRGN 98.5 FM, The Rock. We're going to continue with our series, Trauma and Dysfunction. And we're going to be talking about tonight how that can show up in your marriage and your relationships when it comes to other people. Most people don't think about it like this, so we're going to try our best to break it down and take our time with this series. So y'all have a blessed week. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Be a blessing and not a curse. Share this because it's free, because a lot of people need to hear this so they can choose life instead of pride and death. And your girl Shannon be back with you next Monday with whatever it is that God places on my heart. So God bless you and blessings to you.